previously broad match was terrible 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 broad, broad match would match to anybody that it wanted kind of regardless of the result and the change that took place is google essentially added two features to broad match so because the the dsa element has been added to broad match broad match became a lot smarter before broad match was going to say well if you wanted you know red high heel that match for boot and that match for like working boot and then also match for you know cheap shoes and they still do that there is still some of that there but it actually is gotten smarter now the there's a few different elements that need to be there inside of there's the google ads ecosystem before broad match can actually work well Keyword specifically, as of November 16, 2020, Google put out a uh, kind of a hidden small uh, small memo to everyone uh, that was only really featured on Search Engine Journal. And it was called, Google wants to have advertisers give broad match and smart bidding another try. Previously, broad match was terrible, 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 terrible. Broad, broad match would match to anybody that it wanted, kind of regardless of the results. And the change that took place is Google essentially added two features to broad match. One is a very proactive smart bidding, um, smart bidding engine. And the other one was the ability to scan the page and actually incorporate some DSA. So because the, the DSA element has been added to broad match, broad match became a lot smarter. Before broad match was going to say, well, if you wanted you know, red high heel, that match for boot and that match for like working boot, and then also match for, you know, cheap shoes. And they still do that. There is still some of that there, but it actually is gotten smarter now because if you have, let's say a red high heel on your site and you have a broad match uh, keyword of red high heel, you're going to get more dress, more upscale attire, more high heel type of searches because that's what's also been featured on the page that you're driving that ad to. The, there's a few different elements that need to be there inside of just the Google Ads ecosystem before broad match can actually work well. So in broad match, you'll need to have one, a high volume of, of intent and a high volume of traffic. So for example, when we ran this for, um, well, I'm gonna stop using names. When we ran this for our, our health clinic and we ran it for our, you know, more higher end goods, um, like there's a hammock company that this works really well for. What we found is that when there's a high amount of volume, Google can optimize faster. But the first few few weeks looks it looks terrible. It usually does. It looks pretty terrible because Google is bro broadly matching the search terms to your keyword and finding out what doesn't work and finding out what works. So broad match can work really well when there's a high amount of traffic because it can learn quickly. When there's low amounts of traffic or even low intent and even low you know, conversions, broad match does very poorly. Broad match also can work well uh, for both lead generation and e-commerce. And it actually is one of the only keyword types that I've seen better than an exact match and even phrase match that actually competes with performance max fairly well. Performance Max is going to try to use DSA, which is what the broad match is doing. They DSA and broad match are broadly going to match to what's on your site. Those two compete very often. But a broad match that has a high amount of inbound traffic can sometimes even overtake a, a Performance Max campaign. So <clears throat> it's still a good practice to test broad match in a new account, even alongside of performance max, because it sometimes can even teach performance max, here's what type of search terms you should go after, and also what type of search terms you should not go after. So it's, it's learning to the conversion action, which is whatever you're tracking, whether it's lead or sale. Inside of lead generation gets a little bit more tricky. Lead generation, because a lot of times you're looking for a higher intent type of user, broad match sometimes doesn't work really well. The point in time where broad match can work well for lead generation is when you put a person through a high um a high barrier to entry so if you're using broad match keywords and you're sending them to a page that's just capturing email you're going to get everything relevant or not and it's kind of the same mantra for performance max now it's not a fix for bot traffic but it is a fix for for lead quality so 
actually I'll, I'll, I'll give it a good example of this because I've been running this for some time on a, on a client account. Um, and the client is, uh, let me close all that stuff down. Sorry. Uh, the client account is, and I know I've used this as an example before, um, but I think it's good for everyone since we're all on the call today to see this because I'm not sure who's exactly seeing and who is not yet. So if I add my filter of original source and I say paid traffic, we can see that there's a, still a high amount of activity. I have a lead today, yesterday, third, third, second, second, first, first 31st. You know, there's a high amount of activity. I'm only spending about $3,000 a month in this account and I'm generating some really high quality leads. And you'll always open up the first, let's say like five of them most recently. And this one that came in today, uh, form submission, they're in Santan Valley. They became a lead. There's an email, there's a first name, there's a last name. We have a life cycle, a phone number, a state and region. When is it a good time for us to call you? And they had to put that in there as a required your zip code. And then said, build, go ahead and build your building. This person submitted this on their own. They want a 30 foot by 40 foot by 10 foot building. They built this on their own. So it's a good quality lead. Like I, I couldn't ask for a better lead. Next one, same, usually same, same type. A first name, last name, email. They want an eight foot by 18 foot uh, by 12 foot. I mean, we're putting them through some really, really, really hard forms. Um, you know, monitor style with mezzanine, auxiliary building with RV garage. I mean, again, you get the point. These are really, really, really high quality leads. My keywords that's driving all these leads and even the sales, I have two broad match keywords, steel building, metal building. Doesn't really make sense. It, it shouldn't really make sense because these, you can see the amounts of, of deals that they're creating. They're in the hundreds of thousands. Now, the reason why this is working though, is it cost me right now in the last 30 days, actually it was just less, less, uh, let me go last three months because their sales teams are slow. 106 contacts, $47 each, three deals so far at $1,600 per sale, 10,000 ROAS. Awesome, we're, we're crushing life here because these three deals are worth probably about 100 to $200,000 each. <clears throat> oh yeah, this one here, 229,000. So I know that these are really good deals. Now, when we look at the pure broad with target cost per acquisition, um, we, we started a dynamic ad group this one doesn't have anything. You can see the 3,000 clicks and 100 leads that came in from this, this here. And the keywords um, that are actually driving the majority of clicks, steel building, metal building. We just added in these as pure broad um, keywords after the fact because we wanted to start to see if we can scale up. But since we're in Arizona, we're using broad, there's really not much more we can do. It's just more of a test. <clears throat> but what's nice about this is you can see the cost per leads really low. 25, 68, 36, 44. It's right on target for $41 for less, you know, $500,000 in revenue that we've, we've made. So what's nice about this is pure broad can work. If you look at the actual campaign, I'm not even tracking a conversion. And that's how crazy this is. I haven't tracked a conversion in probably over a year. This is not a glitch. I'm interrupting the video you're watching because I need to remind you that I'm always looking for people to join our team. So if you're passionate about Google Ads and you wanna work with the best Google Ads agency on the planet, please go to solate.com forward slash apply. Speaking of working with the best Google Ads agency on the planet, if you're having trouble with Google Ads and you want professional help, that's what we do. You can go to solate.com, that's S-O-L-8.com to apply for your free, no obligation action plan. And if I've given you any level of value at all, maybe think about giving me a thumbs up and subscribing to our channel. That's how we juice the YouTube algorithm Rhythm so they actually know that I know what I'm talking about. If you have questions, comments, concerns, or confessions, hit me below in the comments. And now back to your regularly scheduled program. One of the reasons is because the client's um, Google, or sorry, not Google, the client's web developer is holding them hostage um, and legally uh, to their own website because they built the website, they had a disagreement, yada, yada, yada. I can't get into the website to install, install track. No one has the password. I'm like, I don't care. That's, that's fine. Last 30 days has been $2,500. The biz strategy is learning. <laughs> it's going to be learning pretty much forever um, because it, it doesn't actually see conversions. But I've been running it like this for probably six months. And the keywords are just all over the place. I have 301 clicks for modular houses. I don't know. I could have made $100,000 off of that. It's not even the keyword that we want. I, we, we don't want modular homes. Um, that's, that's actually what they, what they don't want. They said, Hey, did you know that you actually can't live in these in Arizona, the buildings that we build, you cannot live in them, but I don't really care. What's really interesting about this whole thing is the search terms don't quite matter that much. 
is steel building was driving all of the all the conversions. So the kind of the moral of the story is when you're running pure broad, look less at the search term, look more into the results, which is why a lot of times this fails. I haven't added a negative keyword in probably four months, and there's things on here that I don't even know what they are. And it's it's kind of funny. Like there's tough shed. Okay, that's I get that's probably a, a competitor for a shed. Um, Metal buildings, Phoenix. That's perfect. Uh, that's probably a steel company. I'm still not getting rid of it. A because I can't track conversion, but B when I do track conversion, I look at the actual conversion itself. So there's a lot of stuff here that I should be adding as a negative, and we we don't. I don't even know what Mueller is. Um, so. This is very hard. This is a very advanced strategy because you have to stop touching it and you can't touch it. You shouldn't touch it. You should look at the $30 leads you're getting that are filling out the form perfectly. But when you're looking at Google ads, that should not be happening. So what's really interesting about pure broad is I don't know if this search terms are actually real. I have a lot of good deals that I look at that thing. I'm like, I can't really tell you where that keyword came from because I don't know if this is the, the first click, the multiple clicks, I, I can't really exactly tell. Um, Carolina Carports in Arizona, C. Perlin's for sale near me. I don't even know what this is, but they don't match at all. They're so widely, widely different from each other that they shouldn't happen. So what PureBroad did is simply look at the intent of the user. They didn't look at the search term. It's not about placement. It's not about necessarily even search term. Is does that keyword have an audience that converts? Forget everything we've known about SCAGs, keyword sculpting. We have to just, we have to remove it from our mind. And we also have to know that not everything is, is sometimes even going to be tracked if it's a 21 day time lag and 17 clicks. Your search terms now are irrelevant. Because what we're also seeing though, is that there could be three or four clicks here that if you're tracking like, let's say last click or even first click, you're, you're missing the path in search that we can't even identify. Did someone type in steel say steel shade structure Arizona and then found out about the website, maybe did two or three more searches, looked at some competitors, keep came, coming back to us and converted. Yeah, maybe that's why I see competitors and odd things in here that I don't want, but I'm not going to stop that journey. I'm looking at the conversions and the cost per conversion, the conversion quality. So pure broad doesn't make sense and it's hard because a lot of times we over-optimize ourselves into, into a degradation of lead quality. So when we're looking at modular houses, I'm gonna keep this thing running. I already negative keyword barn dominium because I actually saw the leads coming in and said, hey, do you build barn dominiums? I'm like, okay, perfect. I have a reason to get rid of that keyword. This I'm probably gonna to have to negative keyword out, but I'm not, it's, it's still performing well. And I'm still probably getting people that are looking at modular houses that found this thing that found out that they can't live in it, then said, okay, you know, it's not up to code, but I'll live in it anyway, that's fine. And then they buy a $200,000 house or $200,000 steel building. So there's really a lot of oddities that happen uh, in here. But the best part about this too, is you get to take an approach to a, uh, a keyword strategy that will allow you to be very expansive for not that much money. And which is perfect for us, because if you have a small geography, that's okay. I can still get tens of thousands of clicks in a population that who would, who's gonna buy $200,000 steel buildings? That's, you know, there's not probably a lot of people in Arizona that are just, you know, wanting to spend a quarter million dollars on a metal building on their property in Arizona today. But I'm getting a lot of that traffic that is converting those people at a very high level. We can't, we, we can't, we can't ignore the fact that there's, you know, 75 leads this month in just Arizona for $200,000 steel buildings. Everyone on this call probably says, yeah, that, that, that's not something that, that I thought was going to happen. I'm like, hey, just Arizona quarter million building, can you get $30 leads at the, you know, 10, 15, 20 per week. It, this works though. So we use it very tact tactically. Um, there's another one that I like to bring up. And, and this isn't, again, this isn't going to work every time. My case study here, my reason for bringing this up is it's worth testing. It's not the definitive strategy. It is absolutely worth testing though. Another client of here um, that is a, uh, a body sculpting company. They're in just Chicago. They have an $85 budget per day, uh, $85 per day budget. They're going up against plastic surgeons in Chicago. That imagine like Cosmo, what was the plastic surgery in, in Orange County? Didn't you, you had that one as an example that you always would like to use? Yeah, it was plastic surgery, Beverly Hills. And it was like $500 CPCs or whatever. 
in Chicago, it's probably about the same. I haven't actually done the research to, to look at it, but I'm getting three. The cost per click on plastic surgery uh, procedures is three dollars. Well, why is it three? It's not because I'm bidding, you know, long tail. It's because I'm getting long tail results that are less competitive. So I have 18 leads for $2,200 in Chicago for plastic surgery. Now, if there was a 4th of July lull here. Um, so I know that this is working before and then you'll see a, it's working good, then a lull, now it's coming back. But if we look at like the last seven days, we have $469 cost, five leads, because it's $2.62. So my cost per conversion is 93 bucks. So it's, it works really, really well. And this is a brand new company. There's no Facebook, Instagram, there's nothing. They literally just opened their doors and then said, can you guys all help? So here's what's funny is I'm getting Lipos Chicago to, uh, someone's gonna have to help me with that word. Howdy, I'm looking at you. That looks Spanish to me. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that is it, it says uh, surgeons in Chicago. It's Spanish. Yeah. Perfect. That cost me two bucks for that lead. Like that. I, I mean, my English keyword is broadly matched to a different language. But what if, what if uh, you have a large Spanish community in that city and mm -hmm. people may be Googling it in, in their native tongue, you know, that's what, that's exactly what happened here. So I bid on lipo Chicago. That was my keyword. Google said, hey, did you know that um, you know, surgeons in Chicago in Spanish broadly matches to a liposuction procedure in Chicago? You two should meet. And then I spent $2 on that click rather than $15 a click. I'm sorry, I spent $2 on that conversion. So you'll see here that there is one impression, one click, one conversion. One impression, one click, one conversion. When you're bidding broad, or sorry, when you're bidding phrase and exact, you're gonna see, you know, 2,000 impressions, 110 clicks, and then some conversions because you're going very specific. You're assuming that all of the people that Google knows about are going to be searching that keyword. We are right and wrong at the same time, most of the time. What this means is that we're when we go phrase and, and exact, we're telling Google, no, 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 you stay put. I know exactly what the people that are on your network are going to search, and we don't. We know a lot of times a good direction, and then we have a good keyword strategy and it does work. Broad helps this because it says, says, well, I don't want to bid $28 for, for liposuction in Chicago, but lipo Chicago covers everything. And so I get multiple languages too, but you'll see the cost for conversion in the last 30 days. These are good. Now liposuction near me cheap, or I don't know if it's cheap or not. I don't really care. It's, it's usually a, about a, under two, three thousand dollar procedure. Is that cheap for a person living in Chicago? I'll pay nine bucks to find out. <laughs> Rather than $16 a click to assume no. So that's what's interesting is we look at the leads though. Are the leads good? Right now, this is uh, a white label client. They're like, yeah, leads are good. We just need to keep pumping and flow of leads, keep doing what you're doing. And this is this is perfect for us. This is a $70 per day budget delivering like bad transfers, breast augmentations, and liposuctions and Brazilian belt lifts. That's very, very competitive stuff. Everyone knows what that is. So the, the nice part about using broad is we get to see what works. That's what I love about this. We use DSA like this as well. Scan the page, find out what happens, and then make changes to the page and make changes to the native keywords to make sure that what's on the page and what's also being searched, what's also converting happens more often. Very standard stuff. Broadmatch does the same thing. Broadmatch is DSA, which we love and we all use. Broad match is exactly DSA, but we get to send it off a direction. It's almost like performance max with a signal. Hey, we'd like to have DSA on a page, but also go towards these specific procedures or these specific keywords, or you can go a little bit more long tail. We've a lot of times, we, I like to use the example for the hammock company, someone Googled hammock without stand and they purchased. Another person Googled hammock with stand, they also purchased. Lead generation doesn't, you know, I, I don't have to look at the lead to know that they've spent money with us. And so what's nice about this is we get to see multiple points in, in entry. And we also get to see the intent. We also get to have a lot less cost. We also have a lot wider reach because now I'm matching for a thousand search terms for one keyword. If we can make it more long tail, the better. If we can make it more long tail and multiples, the better. Just know that the keyword that's winning 
is not always going to win because that keyword was matched to a person. I'm oh, sorry, the match to a search term. The keyword is going to win because the keyword matched to a person. There's so much more that we can leverage inside of Google that if we talked about this same conversation two years ago, no one in this room would ever probably, well, virtual room would agree that a keyword is going to match to a different language. We'd be talking about should we add an S at the end? Should we have the word and in between in, in phrase match? Is exact match, are we missing any keywords before and after? Now this thing is going so advanced, it picks up different languages. That's how advanced Google is getting. So to test this in every one of our campaigns, I think it's good, but just know the limitations. Limitations are they need to have a lot of traffic. I need to have the 12,000 impressions in a small area so I can get the 744 clicks to know what works. I'm gonna pay cheap for that though, but I'm gonna know I paid, I got 744 and 720 of them were irrelevant probably. But my CPA is in line, the lead quality is good. I'm okay with that. So it needs to have a high amount of high amount of search and a high amount of activity. That is where broad match works. Um, I think I actually have, uh, I don't have access to it anymore. There was a debt consolidation company that we did this with. When I had debt consolidation as a broad match keyword, I got to bid, uh, my, my CPCs were coming in at half the cost of the first page bid. I was getting 35% conversion rates on the quality leads. 66% on all these, 35% on the quality leads because there's a massive amount of inbound traffic and everyone's trying to say like best and cheaper, fast. And I just did, you know, debt consolidation, Google do your thing. And I did this a year and a half ago and it still works. It still works really, really well. Uh, I'm going to pause here on the broad match top. Oh, and then one last final thing. Um, I was talking about negative keywords and the brand. Broad match will match to your brand. Absolutely. It will try to match to your brand because it scans the page and found your brand. It also scanned the page, find your brand, and then find the competitors of your brand. That's how much this is going, going off on the wrong direction sometimes. Hello and welcome to your daily Google News. Uh, yesterday, Google announced that they're improving uh, their broad match pairing. Uh, meaning the way that they, they use broad match in order to identify relevant search terms. Uh, this is an ongoing march.